Uh, we, yes, we're rather late. <laughs> we're live. Sorry. We're live. Yay. Hi, everybody. Um, sorry, we're a little late. We've had technical problems. So, um, but the lovely Alex is with us today. So I'm really excited uh, to speak to her. And we've uh, shut Monica up because we put her, her, her on, her speaker on mute. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> we seem to be causing major um, echoey problems. So um, anyway, uh, later I shall go on mute so she can speak. But um, anyway. So anyway, let's get it. Hi, I'm very, very big welcome to Alex. How are you today? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm smiling because as we're getting closer and closer to Mercury retrograde, all of these technical issues are popping up. So for those <laughs> who don't believe in astrology, let's talk in a couple of days. <laughs> Well, I hope it can't get any worse, you know, touch wood, you know, it's not going to get any worse because today has been particularly bad. My iPhone has just died on me and I'm, I'm coming to England tomorrow, so I am not a happy bunny. Uh, mm. It has to go to the shop. So I think I've got my iPhone 6 charging. <laughs> but uh, anyway, never mind. <laughs> at least I've got a backup, you know what I mean? Otherwise, I wouldn't have a phone at all. Anyway, on to more, much more interesting and important uh, things. So, Alex, tell us a bit about you. Huh. What do you want to know, Nikki? What, what side of me would you like to know? Let's... Well, I'd love to sort of start at the beginning. What, uh, when did you start becoming spiritual or has you, have you always been spiritual? That's an interesting question, Nikki. Thank you for asking that. I feel maybe I haven't always associated with the world spiritual. I come from a Catholic background, but I was always interested by the mystical. So how do I move energy? How do I create energy? How could I forecast the future? How could I? So I was always interested by these questions. But if you look at my, I call it my 3D trajectory, I started by learning economics. I went into the financial world for over 15 years. And today I was talking to clients and I said, I was an investment banker. And I was saying, I cannot possibly imagine you being an investment <laughs> banker. <laughs> it's the red hair that gives you it away, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and I was, I was, I mean, I was, I've been, and I'm still very much business and money oriented, even though I now call myself spiritual and I said, I'm an investment banker in recovery. <laughs> 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 who, who unleashed the warrior goddess out of the spiritual closet. So that that's my background. And unfortunately, I started to associate myself or come out of the spiritual closet when my husband passed away. And that was a big, big transition because I, until then, like I said, I was interested by the mystical, but I wasn't really exploring it consistently. And after his... Um, passing away then i was really on my hands and knees and this is where i really cried out to the angels what am i supposed to do i don't want to go back to the financial world and leave two children very young you know when you work in finance you leave home at six and you come back at nine and i thought they let it lost you know their dad i don't want them to feel like they're losing their mom as well and and so i put out that question to to the angels in that case and little by little that questions got answered it wasn't a straightforward answer not at all but i was shown i was shown little little steps and the universe always answer i said to my clients the universe always answer but you gotta listen to those answers right and, and yeah you need patience um, don't you? <laughs> you need patience you need to understand what is the answer from the divine and what is from not so divine answer and then you still have to maneuver and take actions superb fabulous so what actually took you into the stream that you decided uh, you were going to partake in it was again like i said just a little bit at the time so when i said okay i'm not going back to the financial world per se what am i going to do and what saved me at the time of grief was meditation so i thought well i'm going to teach others how to meditate because that saved me and again many doors seems to shut at that point you know i wanted to find a good meditation teacher and i couldn't and then i found this school really neck on my doorstep that was offering awareness coaching and meditation mindfulness i thought oh now i understand what the other doors closed it was too narrow 
So I started coaching and then from coaching, I discovered Theta Healing and from Theta Healing, Shamanism. So <laughs> it, all, it all came together in the end. Uh, but like I said, things were shown to me one step at a time and I did have, I, I pat myself on the back and this is why I encourage everybody to say that even though it was very scary, you know, to start a new road and to find a company, never had my own business company and said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And, you know, leaving a secure job and quite a good <laughs> secure job and <laughs> to say, okay, I'm coming out of the spiritual closet and I'm going to do something spiritual. Um, and yes, that that's what I did. And now I'm going more into motivational speaking. So I'm always evolving. I don't want to stay in the same environment forever there's always the next level for me okay the um i know that on your bio it, we were talking it was talking about uh shamanism and things like that do you want to maybe discuss that a little bit and how sure. you get into that <laughs> sure sure so theta healing was my first like really deep um play <laughs> deep play with with how to move energy, recognize energy, and really have communication with the divine. And from there, I discovered shamanism again. I don't even remember how it started to come into my awareness, but at some point I said, this is something I really want to look for. And again, I was looking for a different teacher and there was never the right person until one day this person from Hawaii shows up in my awareness. And long and behold, I started to teach with them which really required a lot of dedications, you know, that were on the wine time. So my classes were starting at 11 o'clock at night, twice a week for, you know, months, 11 o'clock till one o'clock in the morning, just, you know, you do the learning, you do the practice. But I think this gives me integrity as well. You know, if I'm passionate about something and I recognize a good teacher, I'm going to elevate myself and I'm going to do what it takes. And shaman is, is a beautiful way for me to really understand the web of life, to really understand how we come into alignment with nature, the plants, the stars, the sky, Mother Earth. You know, it's really tells you and makes you feel like part of one and all, as opposed maybe for me, other modalities didn't do it so much. I could understand the concept, but I didn't see it happening. And with shamanism, it's really helped me to bring this together and to have a more direct conversation as well through the spirit animals, the ascended masters. Um, I've got daily conversation with Jesus. And that's, again, for me, it's good because coming from a Catholic background, I grew up with these personalities, let's call them, right? So for me to say, okay, I'm not necessarily a church person, but I still acknowledge an ascended master like Jesus. And true shamanism it gives me direct access as opposed to, Yes, I go to church, but, you know, it's a different, it's more a tradition than just uh, mm -hmm. really something I feel within me. Yeah, well, the, yeah, the Hawaiian shamans are, are very into, obviously, the, the energy that comes from the volcanoes and things. Did they teach you about that or? They, they mentioned that. And also what's really interesting, recently somebody sent me a picture of the goddess that, you know, really the the volcano that looks after the volcano and she's got red hair and <laughs> at least from that picture said well, absolutely. <laughs> it's very much like me so there is a connection there you know with fire is one of my elements um th there is a connection it's not again it's not by chance that my mentor is from hawaii and mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. fabulous. And so did you learn all about, um, what did you learn about uh, with the shamanic, what sort of type of shamanic path did you go down? Did you, um, is, was the specific um, things that you, you do? Is there, I don't know per se, if I could say there's a specific thing. Again, it all depends about your personal connection with the divine. The one type of shaman I can tell you I'm not, I'm not one of the shamans that use plant medicine by ingesting I, ayahuasca or other type of medicine. I connect to the plant medicine energetically and I recognize that for me that's enough and I don't want to be ingesting 
plants in order to awaken myself to the divine. I don't, I feel, and, and like me, there is this type of division in a sense between those who think, no, no, in order to really have a spiritual awakening, you need to ingest the plant. And there are those others that say, well, you know, it comes with a whole new game. <laughs> when you're in a human body, you have to face and I'm happy not to do that. So I think that would be the main difference between, you know, myself and my school of and others. Uh, mm -hmm. But for those who wants to do it, just do it. You know, I, I'm not one that's going to tell you in order to achieve a certain level, you need to do certain substances. Mm -hmm. It defeats the purpose to me. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it also depends on, on what they give you as well. So if they can give you a certain path that you go along, I mean, I would never take those either. But um, I know a lot of people who, who do and have done so and things like that. And, um, you know, I know quite, a you know, um, but, you know, everybody to their own, whatever's good for them. You know, so, um, you know, I, you, I definitely am with you. You don't have to do that to be able to, uh, you know, to get something that's important. So, um, but anyway, sorry. <laughs> so, okay, back to you then. Uh, what do you actually, so what you, I presume you obviously have clients. What do you actually teach them and what can you offer? So for our people who are listening in, uh, if you want to tell them a bit about, you know, um, how you help people and how they can do to connect with you. So I think there is many things I can help people with, but the, the primarily motivation maybe, and, and the, it's to help people feel good in themselves, is to help people that have maybe lost their connection with what I call their magnificent self. And often for me, the way I'm working, because I've got a business background, is I help them to grow their business by healing themselves, healing their trauma, healing all of those agreements. So we come in this body in this life with many agreements whether we took these agreements you know in this body whether it comes from our family maybe maybe it comes from our religions our traditions you know we have imagined many many layers of you should do this you should not do that so you should shop in this way you should not shop in that way and all of this is constricting us in a box and we forget most of the time and this is everybody you know awaken not awaken ascended not ascended but we have different levels and it really impacts on how we show up in the world. And ultimately, how do we feel about ourselves? You know, do I get up in the morning? Am I feeling I'm in my body? Am I feeling I've got energy enough? Am I feeling, you know, I'm happy to get up and do whatever I need to do? Am I living a beautiful experience? even with the challenges, right? So I'm saying if you come to me and expect me, I have my magic wand here, you know, to wave my magic wand and all of a sudden you've got no more problems in your life and you've got the relationship of your dreams and the business of your dreams and you do nothing, I cannot do that for you. But if you come to me and you say, ah, oh, I really feel low energy and I'm not motivated, and I don't understand why, I really want to pass through that door. I really want to grow my business. I really want to bring something to the world. I really want to, you know, be the best version of myself and feel good in myself. Then I say, then you came to the right person and I can help you. And you don't need to necessarily believe in spirituality. You don't have to believe in the masters. You don't have to believe in the angels. It doesn't matter, right? All you have to do is show up, trust yourself, trust that I'm going to give you good guidance and we can move you forward. And this is how you you start to really let go of some of the stories you start to say actually i can show up i am beautiful i am divine i can offer many things to the world i can be a good mom i can be a good dad i can you know enjoy enjoy even if my car breaks down even if you know i get laid off at work because maybe you got laid off at work and there's something else that you you want to be doing, you know, you never believed in yourself. Maybe you want to be a photographer and somebody said, oh, never going to work that way. So by having somebody with you that can really work on an energetic level and say, well, let's get rid of some of these agreements, shall we? And then you can move forward. And it's very easy, especially today is with the mindset coaches and the relationship coaches and the money coaches, you know, to feel that 
there is a lot out there, but if your stories, your agreements are still holding you back, you're going to feel good for three days, four days, maybe a month, and then you're going to hit the whole pattern, right? That pattern that say you're not good enough. So I find shamanism a very, very direct and there's no BS because <laughs> you're talking directly to the divine and they're going to tell you this person is stuck because this happened when, you know, I don't know, they were three years old, they totally forgot about it, but this is what's going on. So when you remove that, their life transforms. Superb, great. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> yes, thank you. That's wonderful. And obviously, we'll be putting all your details down if people want to be able to get down below this video. Um, I'm going to switch my microphone off and see if Monica would like to say anything. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. That's so very kind. Uh, yes, I have two questions, Alex. Uh, one from our, our members. I'm not sure if you quite answered that, but she was interested in your training as a priestess, where that's been uh, done. Uh, she, she's interested in following similar path. So I think that was a very personal question for her. Um, maybe I can let you answer that one first. Thank you. Thank you. So, so I want to say that the title of leading shaman process was given to me. Again, in one of the asking the universe, you know, who am I? What am I here to do? Then I was given this title. And the role of a priestess is really this title. to and hold the light for people, really to clear to as much as you can of your agreement and become a clear agreement and channel of light. So if you want so to follow that path, it's a very personal path, path, you need to find your spiritual call in a sense that I'm more than happy to have a personal conversation with her. But one person is really, really, really for me, for the epitome of, of priestess, priestess is Ariel Fieldbury. And I'm seeking right to write it in that. Uh, Ariel Fieldbury. Wonderful. So, so, so it's in the comments section, yes. Yes, yes. But if but she wants to have a chat, chat or then have, have to talk to, talk to her about, her about that. that. Oh, wonderful. Um, and my question, my, my uh, personal question is, uh, I love your style. You are very theatrical in the way you, I perceive you at least. Is it something which has appeared when you be, went for that, when you has um, started following the spiritual path or have you always had that style? It's, it's just fascinating to me. <laughs> So we're, we're the head of the game, and I'm going to say it here. I'm putting together a, call, call, a course called Fashion for the Soul. So this is the big, I haven't, I haven't disclosed it on my pages yet, but this is what I've, again, been called to do. Because of, and when I say fashion for the soul, you can imagine whatever you want to imagine. But as you know me, I think you get the idea what it is going to be, right? And... I was a very shy person, but I always used fashion and accessories and the way I present myself to talk without having to talk. So to give an impression of me without having to really stand out and explain who I am, who, you know, what am I here to do again? So even in the investment bank, it was quite funny because they all showed up with their gray suit and I showed up in a suit, but you know, <laughs> my suit were quite eccentric and quite different. And people loved it because it, th they used to say you bring fresh air in an environment that was very stuck and very competitive. And here I am, you know, showing up with my colors and my weird suits and, and I could just laugh, you know. So again, I want to teach people that you can be different and unique and be appreciated, you know, because we've got this fear that if we not conform, if we're not doing like everybody else, they're going to look at us, but we think they're going to look at us and judge us and it's going to be negative. And it's actually, it's the opposite. When you've got the guts, <laughs> this is one of the things I'm going to be teaching in the course, to show up as you wish, then 
the whole world will love you more and will appreciate you because even you're not trying to compete with anybody, right? You're just showing up as yourself. And and the same I encourage, I've got a, a son who is really not into fashion. And of course, it's a boy and the girl was very much into fashion. Sometimes I look at her outfit thinking, how did she put that together? And even if I don't like it, I really encourage her to say, actually, well done. Why did you put this? How did you select that? You know, just to make sure she she is comfortable with what she's wearing and she does it with, with intention. And as everything else, I think when you do something with intention from the heart, it, it just shows. That's, that's great. Thank you. Beautiful answer to my um, uh, very specific question. And we <laughs> learned something else about you. Uh, thank you so much. I will let uh, Nikki uh, take over. That was enough of me. <laughs> thank you, Alex. That was a very small of you. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, thank you, Monica. We really appreciate you. Well, anyway, is there anything else that you'd like to say as a final word, Alex, or is have you said what you'd like to say? Well, I just want to say thank you one more time for inviting me. It's been very, very exciting to be here. I really like this spiritual awakening, you know, and I think that this is the time. This is the time to really gathering together again, to bring awareness, to bring love, to really get together and support people that maybe don't feel so supported people that feel a bit alone people that think am i crazy i'm seeing angels i'm hearing voice no you're not crazy you're not crazy start to talk about it with people that really understand you like this circle and if you're not too sure i i like again i said to my children you don't have to tell everybody and everybody that you talk to dragons but when you feel somebody that you're safe then you can share, right? And you can encourage people to look things differently. So you don't have to be stuck in the world of paradigm and you don't have to be stuck in a world of, you know, only what you see, it's real. Just let your imagination flow and, and find people where you find love and where you find comfort and where you find fun as well, right? It's all about doing it with a smile. It's all about acknowledging. We all have our challenges, as I said before, but when you reach out for help, there is always, always, it could be divine, it could be human, somebody to support you. And I think this is really what I want to stress. You're never alone. It might feel like you're alone. You're never alone. You just have to ask. Great. Thank you. Well, we loved having you here. So hopefully we'll be able to have you back again. Thank for you sure. so much. And um, uh, we'd like to say a fabulous evening to everybody or a fabulous day or morning or, evening, or whatever <laughs> you are. And I uh, hope whatever you do, hope you have a good one. You guys Thank, you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.